there, I'm Angela Sharp, and welcome to The Daily Mix. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. My mom actually was watching my niece and my nephew over the weekend, actually since Wednesday. So I went over there to kind of give her a, you know, a couple minutes of a break, got to hang out with my niece and my nephew, and I just love how kids are. So my niece, who's four, was telling me how only kids can go to her school, meaning that my mother could not walk her into her school. And I was like, only kids? And she said, yeah, not you. And I was like, not me? And she was like, no. You're supposed to be a grown up. And I love that she whispered it because it is a secret. I'm trying really not to be a grown up. I kind of want to be Peter Pan someday. So I just thought that was super cute. Kids are just adorable. But I'm going to try to be a grown up today and give you a great show. But I have to start right away and take a moment to congratulate our own Andre Holman. He's STL TV's video production manager, and last week he was honored by the Urban League at a special Black History Month celebration where they recognized the achievements of 14 African American veteran communications professionals. Andre has been with STL TV for more than 25 years, and we couldn't be prouder of him and all his accomplishments. Also, I have to say, he's one of the nicest people ever. So it's always wonderful to see people get recognized for being great when you also know that they're super wonderfully nice. So congratulations, Andre. And we are here in March again, so I have a great guest coming up later on in the show. You know, March was yesterday and also 3,000 years ago, but we're back in March again. And in March was when all those live events shut down. Greg Hagland is gonna be here today to talk about Keep Live Alive. This is a way to raise money for those live event workers who have been desperately hurt by this pandemic. So he's gonna be on later in the show, but I've got a lot of great stuff coming up. So let's get started with today's Daily Mix. Last week, Mayor Krusen unveiled the city's newest 100% battery electric zero emission vehicle. The four Chevy Bolt Bolts will be used to help various departments serve residents and conduct business while improving air quality at the same time. An executive order was also signed, which will add even more electric vehicles to the city's fleet as older, less efficient vehicles are taken out of service. You can learn more about the new electric vehicles under the news tab at stlouis-mo.gov. Five years ago, Kevin Lemp, the founder of Four Hands Brewery, wanted to make a beer to give back to the city that gave him everything. That's when Citywide American Pale Ale was born. For every case sold, the brewery donates $1 back to a carefully chosen nonprofit. And since 2016, they've given more than $250,000 to dozens of charities throughout the St. Louis area. This year, they're partnering with the Ronald McDonald House, Missouri Forest Relief, Safe Connections, and Home Sweet Home. You can learn more about the Citywide and all of the organizations they are partnered with at citywidestl.com. Okay, now if you love Clementine's Creamery, and let's be honest, everyone loves Clementine's Creamery, and you love spoiling your pet, then you're really going to like this. Clementine's has partnered with Kansas City-based Mix Mutt Creamery to carry an all new, all natural ice cream created just for dogs. Yeah, it, this is just for dogs, you guys. The new Pup Cups, I think that's an adorable name, are available in three flavors. Banana Peanut Butter Dream, Barking Maple Bacon, and Blueberry Yum Yum. To celebrate the launch all month long, they'll be donating 50 cents from every Pup Cup sold to Stray Rescue of St. Louis. That's adorable. And you can learn more about Clementine's and of course the new Pup Cups on social media and at clementinescreamery.com. Now March is Women's History Month and all month long, St. Louis a Public Library is offering virtual programs to help celebrate. 
They also want to help you honor the women in your family. Throughout March, patrons are invited to record the unique stories of the women in their families as a way to, to preserve and celebrate their legacies in a form of oral history recordings. For more information on how to submit a recording or to register for one of the awesome virtual programs, visit slpl.org. This year, the annual St. Louis Women's March is going virtual, but that's not gonna stop them from going big. So you're gonna wanna make your plans to grab some friends for a watch party that promises to inspire and energize. They have a really great lineup of speakers and performers planned for the event, and it will be streaming free on Facebook, Instagram, and on STL Women's March website. The virtual kickoff is Saturday, March 6th at 10 a.m. Check out stlwomensmarch.com for more information. And be sure to follow them on social media for a sneak peek at this year's lineup. Of course, another great place to visit in honor of Women's History Month is the Missouri History Museum. In addition to their special events, this is the perfect time to check out Beyond the Ballot Exhibit. I actually had to go shortly after they opened. It was actually really neat, especially for me, because you know I kind of was born into, you know, women can vote, women can do things. But when you go there and, and see the unnamed women's faces and kind of learn how it wasn't that long ago, it's actually, it's kind of powerful actually. Here are a few of the highlights from my visit. Talk a little bit about this exhibit for people who have yet to experience it. What yep. what can they take in when they get here? Sure. So um, I, it's a unique take on the suffrage story. So it is called Beyond the Ballot, and um, we look at the history of women in St. Louis really from its earliest days. Um, I think some people um, have this idea, or were taught, or um, you know, we just think that somehow women didn't do anything in St. Louis before they got the vote in 1920, right. um, where in reality, women have been here since the very beginning and have been contributing to the city. And so the first half of the exhibit is really dedicated to um, those women before 1920 who were contributing to St. Louis. And so we have 32 women that we highlight with their names and their brief um, life story and their activity here, and also some uh, artifacts and great images that show what were women's roles were before 1920 and just provide more context of, of what was happening um, and what the city was like at that time. And then we finished the exhibit with the St. Louis suffrage story, which is a unique story in itself and one that a lot of people just don't know. If there is one thing that you could share with somebody who maybe doesn't know too much about the story or doesn't know if they want to come, what would that be that you'd say, hey, come out here because? Hmm, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why wouldn't you want to come? Um, I think... I think it's a responsibility, honestly, um, especially as a as a woman living in St. Louis, to know the women in our history who have created and paved this way for us, um, but also to start to see St. Louis as an important city in American history. Um, that in a lot of ways, you know, because we are in the middle. Um, you know, we can't decide if we're Southern or Northern or Western or Eastern, you know, that St. Louis was really kind of the center of where things were happening and, and the rest of the country was watching. And I think you see that in the suffrage movement too. And there's just lots of really cool, interesting stories and interesting women um, that I think we should know, we should know what they did and we should know their names, just like we know the names of, you know, so many men who were part of St. Louis history. Um, there were women who were equally as important. 
Right, and that's kind of one of the reasons I kind of love it here at the Missouri History Museum. How can somebody find out more information about the Missouri History Museum and, of course, Beyond the Ballot? Sure. Uh, it's very easy. Just go to our website. It's mohistory.org. And uh, in order to come to the museum, it's free, as it always it always has been and always will be. Um, but they do have to register before they come in because um, we're limiting the number of people in the museum. Um, but once they're in, uh, they are able to spend as much time as they want in the gallery and in the museum. I just always think it's so interesting, especially for myself, because you know, I grew up where women could vote and women could do anything they wanted. And to think that it really wasn't that long ago. Now, granted, we still have a lot of work to do, but it's very interesting. Now I'm very excited. This is the part of the show where I'm joined by my guests. And you guys know that I have been talking and talking about live events. That's where I do most of my work. And Greg Haglug is here to talk about Keep Live Alive. You know, those live industries were the first ones to shut down and we're still gonna be waiting for those to come back. So Greg, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for inviting me. So what is Keep Live Alive? What is Keep Live Alive? It is a, um, this, it is an, a group that's come together to raise money, to uh, offer grants to people that have been laid off or unemployed during the pandemic in the live entertainment space in St. Louis. And how are you guys coming about this? Because I saw there's some big names on this bill. Well, we have a special that we're going to do on Friday, March 12th at 7 p.m. local time. It's free. Um, it's a 90-minute uh, entertainment special. It's not a streaming concert, uh, but it's got headliners like Sammy Hagar and uh, Kevin Cronin of REO Speedwagon, Paula Poundstone, a myriad of local musicians and local personalities. So you say it's not a concert. Is it going to be more like them talking about what the live entertainment industry is to them? It's going to be a little bit of sharing some stories from the road. Uh, people will share uh, some really interesting stories about the first time they ever played St. Louis or uh, one of the more memorable concerts they ever did in St. Louis. Um, Steve Shankman, for example, uh, from Contemporary Productions, will be talking about the papal visit uh, and all the people it took to put on um, the papal visit in St. Louis, which Contemporary was responsible for. I mean, that's huge. So it's, we're not just talking music. We're talking all live events. All live events, comedy, music. Um, you know, it's it's affected everything from Bush Stadium to Del Mar Hall have all been affected by the pandemic and people's lives have been disrupted by that. And we wanted to do, try and do something to just give back a little bit. Now, will this be something that people can call in and donate money for? They can't call in, but they can go to our website at keep live alive stl.org and they can do that right now they can make a donation uh through paypal or credit cards or there's information there on how you can write a check okay and you've been doing kind of live events forever i, I kind of love the, the the billing that you have you've done some impressive things this is a little bit different for you how has that been to adjust for yourself well, at Contemporary Productions, where I also work, is um, you know in the live entertainment business too, in terms of corporate meetings and live events for corporations. And um, we made a very big transition in 2020 and continue to do so in 2021 to doing virtual events, very similar to what we're doing right here today. Um, so we've made that transition seamlessly and. Uh, it helped me in terms of being able to work on this special. Uh, also, my partner, Ron Stevens, who is the director, and um, uh, he and I, this is the second project that he and I have worked on in the last couple of years that involved a special. The last was um, Never Say Goodbye, a documentary we did on the history of Cation Radio. Yeah, and this um, event that you're putting on, Keep Live Alive, has Hubbard Radio personalities on there. So Mason and Remy from WIL and Lux from The Point. And John Hewlett and Mark Close and Fabaz from Keishi. Uh Learn is kind of our host. Uh, she introduces the show. Uh, so yeah, we've got the uh, Hubbard Broadcasting has been fabulous to help us on this. They've put up a fair amount of promotion 
to promote this, uh, as well as they're making a commemorative t-shirt that they'll be selling with proceeds going to Keep Live Live. Um, WIL is sponsoring a concert later on in March down in Ballpark Village with proceeds going to Keep Live Alive. So Hubbard has really been a huge, huge help for us. Now you're kind of on the pulse of what's going on. And as we're here now in March again, I feel I keep saying again, because you know, this all kind of started in March of last year. When do you see live events coming back to the capacity that they were? I know right now we've got some at like 25%, but what do you see it getting actually normal? Actually normal is, is probably going to be, um, you know, that's a good question and it's a tough question to answer because there's so many variables. There's the variable of the vaccine rollout, uh, local government restrictions, uh, state restrictions, federal restrictions. Um, the question really is, is that I, I believe, the answer to the question I believe is, you know, is it going to be July 1st or September 1st? Um, but we see things beginning to roll out slowly in the spring and uh, uh, picking up some momentum mid-summer is where we look to uh, be back to full strength, hopefully by, by mid-summer. I sure hope you're right. Can you remind everybody one more time where they can go donate, how they can watch the special and be a part of keeping live alive? Right. Well, they can go to any of the Hubbard music radio stations, WIL, Casey, The Point, or The Arch, and they can go to the special on Friday, March 12th at 7 p.m. to donate and to also watch the special. You can go to keeplivelivestl.org. Great. Thank you so much, Greg. I appreciate you joining me to tell me about it today. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. And after you guys check that out and maybe if you're able, make a donation, make sure you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. You can even drop us a line at thedailymix at stltv.net. We want to hear from you. That's going to do it for The Daily Mix, but keep it right here in STL TV and experience St. Louis. See you next time.